Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, solo tabletop gamer. This is Tabletop Talk. And in this episode of Tabletop Talk, we're gonna be talking about Rollmaster. Now before I get into my video, I do got a couple disclaimers I gotta get out of the way. First thing is, everything I'm gonna talk about is my own hard earned money. Nobody's paying me to talk to you about any of this stuff. This is just stuff I enjoy. Second thing is, if you like the video, click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click the little bell icon, and every time I upload a new video, you will hear about it. So, before we get the video started, this would be a good time, considering this is Tabletop Talk, which is me and you, one-on-one -on -one conversation with a cup of coffee, to click the pause button and go grab that hot cup of coffee, tea, soda, energy drink, whatever it is that you're drinking, and we'll get into this video. So, Rollmaster. Now, there's been some, let's say, misunderstandings, urban myths attached to this game. One of the many being that I find extremely funny is the fact that a lot of people say in order to play Rollmaster, you have to have a master's degree in mathematics. To be able to understand and play it. False. Second, Rollmaster was developed as a way to mentally punish other gamers with such a state of confusion that they would never truly fully understand this game. That too is false. So, Let's get through some of the myths and talk about what Rollmaster is and what Rollmaster isn't. Well, first and foremost, Rollmaster is a D100 system. And because of that, it gives you a very wider area of probability than a D20 system would. Now, one thing about a D20 system and is it's very familiar to a lot of gamers out there. A lot of gamers, when they first get into tabletop role-playing games, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 gamers, and it could even be 8 out of 10, are introduced to Dungeons & Dragons. As a matter of fact, right now, 5th edition's out, and 5th edition is everywhere. So a lot of the people getting into the hobby, I'm going to say 8 out of 10, if not, nine out of ten of those people who are new into the hobby as of this year probably introduced to Dungeons and Dragons. Now some of other ones may be introduced to you know clones like this known as an OSR old school revivals. Both of them are D20 systems right and they play very similar and once you learn a D20 system and you get it underneath your belt it's very simple to go to another D20 system. So somebody who may learn basic fantasy, it's going to be extremely simple for them to go to Dungeons and Dragons and vice versa. Or any other D20 system that may be out there for science fiction, horror, what have you. They're going to find that the layout of the system, the rules, character advancement and all that are all very similar and interchangeable. And with that, as a gamer, you develop kind of like Linus from the Peanuts. You got this safety blanket, right? And with that, when you see other s systems out there that you perceive as maybe more complicated, they tend to scare people away. And I want to break through some of those myths and explain to you about Rollmaster. Now, Rollmaster, one thing it is, one of the myths that's out there that is not a myth, it is true, is one of the most lethal role-playing systems out there for your character. Because there is such a wide probability of possibilities that could happen that something as simple as your barbarian or I'll say your fighter going through a first level dungeon and encountering a goblin that there is within the realm of possibility 
that that goblin could land a critical hit and slay your barbarian with one slash of a sword and vice versa. So that can happen in Rollmaster. But let's talk a little bit about Rollmaster and then I'm going to get into the more modern version of it that I actually play a lot called Harp. So one of the things about Rollmaster, unlike other game systems out there, is you had to have multiple books in order to play the system. Particularly the first one you had to have is Character Law, Campaign Law. Now Character Law, and a lot of people that I have talked to that have misconceptions about this game system, where they get confused is in Character Law, when you read the book, the first part of the book explains the basic game system to you. So it would be like breaking up the difference between basic Dungeons and Dragons to advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So imagine if they took those two system, systems and they put them together in one book. And if you're skimming through the book, how perhaps towards the front of the book it tells you in the basic game that an elf is a character class unto itself. And then you get towards the back of the book in the advanced section to where it's telling you, okay, an elf is now a race, and as far as an elf being a race, you have all these other character classes open up to you. It's going to confuse you, and you're going to be going, wait a minute, where are they going with this book? And as far as character law goes, that's how it's broken up. So when you go through the book, you read the basic game first. And it explains the basic game. How to make a character, how to generate your stats for your prime attributes. At that point, character development. How to create your character development points. How to allocate those points to purchase skills. And you move on from there. Now once you get through that it goes into the second half of the book as to what's called optional rules basically. Or let me get to the section in the book here so I know exactly hmm optional rules is what they call it and so at that point it gives you more depth to put into your game now you can play the basic system or you can play basically the advanced system and with that it's going to give you a lot more modifications to spells character development and some of your professions so when you look at that that may confuse a lot of people Particularly if you're used to a way that a D20 system book is laid out and then you skim through this, it's going to confuse you if you don't really read it. Now, when I mean by read it, I'm not talking about just reading the sentence and moving on. I mean literally sitting down and reading it and letting it sink into the gray matter and really understanding there is a large difference between this D100 system compared to all the other D100 systems out there on the market. Rollmaster is a standalone system to itself and I'm going to talk about some of those differences. Now Rollmaster, one of the reasons why I play Harp rather than Rollmaster is because you had to have character law and campaign law, how to create the characters. Then if you're using a magic class, you have to have spell law. Then if you had any other type of class that utilized your weapons, as a fighter, ranger, so on and so forth, you had to have your arms and claw law, which also, last but not least, you had to have your creature and your treasures, right? Because you have to have encounters and treasure. So. You look at, you have, at that point, four books to run this game system, which compared to most D20 systems is about the same. Now, 
where Rollmaster is unique compared to other role-playing games out there. And it really does add more flavor, I'm going to say, into the game. It's combat. Now, with combat, how combat works is, obviously, you roll the D100. You would add your weapon skill percentage to that roll, along with any other skill that you would have used with the attack. Now, let's say you had a skill of hiding. Your character was hiding in cover, waiting for the foe to come by to attack. That would also be added into that attack. So, let's say our combined, at that point, bonuses together was 60%. Right, so we'll say we got 15% from our weapon, 15% from our hiding, that's 30, we rolled 30, we have 60. But Rollmaster is a little bit different than most other fantasy role playing games, is it takes into consideration how well does your character maneuver in it, armor he's wearing, and is there any penalties to that? Because let's face it, he may not be able to just under the assumption that he could put on a full suit of leather armor and go out and run a marathon in it. The fact that he may be a little clumsy in this armor and there may be some things that he has to get adjusted to. So let's say that armor at that point is a 10% penalty. So now our 60 is dropped down to a 50. And let's say our foe, his defense bonus is at that point 40%. So now we have 10%. But when we look at our weapon, let's say we're using a pole arm. So we're going to get a plus 5% adjusted to that weapon. So at this point, our final roll is going to be 15%. So we take that 15%. And at that point, using our arms and claw law, we would go over to the chart. As you can see, everything was listed with a percentile. And then, of course, your weapons up here were broken up into your columns. So, let's say we had a 15%, I'll go over here, and at that point, I'm going to read the caption. How much damage did I do to my foe? So, I got a glancing blow. The foe takes plus three hits. You have the initiative next round. So I didn't completely kill him, but I did a little bit of damage, but it gave me the initiative for the next round. Now, what if that would have went terribly wrong, right? What if my character came jumping out of that cover, swinging his sword, only to roll a fumble? Hmm. So, let's go see what that fumble would be and of course rollmaster takes into account that if there are critical hits and what they mean by critical is anytime you were to hit your character depending on that percentile so the higher the number the more damage you're going to do the lower well lower damage but when it comes to fumbles they look at fumbles the exact same way a fumble could be something as simple as stubbing your toe to my god he fell down this coal chute in a mine that may go to a bottomless pit to nowhere that kind of fumble so looking at our same fumble and using the 15 percent i go over here and if i fumbled it would tell me you lose your grip and the opportunity to get in an open blow. 
maybe you will improve. So at that point I would do nothing, I would have no initiative, the foe would take no damage, and at that point the turn would go over to the foe for him to go through that same process. I would be rolling the percentile dice, adding his, at that point, weapon, skill bonus to it, any other skill he would have used, in subtracting my defense bonus from that and crossing it into the chart to see what kind of damage is done. So you can see where, with Rollmaster, it can be a particularly, at that point, lethal system. To where your Barbarian could go through it, and maybe he could do five hits to this Goblin, thinking, haha, wait till next turn because I'm going to slam. Only to find out when it's the Goblin's turn to roll, the Goblin rolls a critical. And, well, let's say the Goblin rolled extremely high, and he was up in around the 150% range, even with your defense bonus subtracted, only to go through the table to find out, it's instant death. And there's no turning back from that. So your barbarian would just be, well, another pile of bones on the dungeon floor. So that's where some of the very unique differences between Rollmaster being a D100 system and overall, a role-playing system to itself is very unique. Now, Rollmaster's been around for a while, and I even was looking on the internet. You can still get these books cheap. They're still out there. They're still everywhere. They've come out with a second edition, but personally, when I want to play Rollmaster, what I really enjoy is this game system right here called Harp which is High Adventure Role Playing, which at that point is made by the same publisher, Iron Crown Enterprises, but what they decided to do was take Rollmaster, streamline it, make it a much more streamlined, quick game compared to the original version and condense everything into one book. Now, you could argue this could be the third edition of Rollmaster. And if you look at it, the original Rollmaster being 1,000, second edition being their second thousand, and then if you look at their book, it goes into 3,000. Just the way that I look at it, but there's no facts behind that. So don't take my word on it. I'm just saying. The way I perceive this game, this would be like the equivalence of the D20 system to Dungeons and Dragons going from its basic to its third edition. To where at that point we've seen a more streamlined system. We did away with Thackle, we did away with all of that, and we went to a positive plane attack matrix to where at that point you just roll a 20 sider and add bonuses to it, and it made everything move quicker, made run smoother. Same thing with Harp. Now, Harp, unlike Rollmaster, there are some subtle differences. And some of the subtle differences that I like is particularly with character development. So, in the original Rollmaster, you only had five of your stats, character stats, that gave you character development points. And from those character development points, you had to choose which skills you wanted to advance. Whereas if with Harp, at that point, all your characteristics, I mean attributes, I'm sorry, give you development points to be able to use. So at that point, it gives you a lot more to be able to choose as far as skills, what you want to beef up, what you want to purchase, how many weapons you may want to use, so on and so forth. Now the cool thing about Harp, unlike a lot of other fantasy role-playing games out there, is there are no restrictions on it as far as character development and character creation. 
Now it offers all of the traditional classes that you would see in a normal fantasy role-playing game. You have the fighter. They call it the harper, which you would know as a bard if you were playing a d20 system, a cleric, a mage, a monk, a ranger, a rogue, and a thief, and my favorite, a warrior mage. Gotta love the warrior mage, and I love the fact that I can, uh, at that point, use the a fire spell on my sword to be able to do extra damage. It's very nice. So, in this system, you also get into character classes, character races. Now, what's nice about the character races that I really, really do enjoy about this is you're not limited to what kind of particular character race you'd like to play. Now, in Harp, they break up their character races into a dwarfs, elves, gnomes, what they call a Grix, which I would think more as a half orc in a d20 system, but in here they explain that they're actually very peaceful creatures, they just are ugly. Halflings, and then of course a human. But with that in mind, those are just your basic races. As a matter of fact, as you go further through the book, at that point, you can be half anything you want to be. So, in the case of the Grex, so I could have a Grex that's also half elf. And I could either choose it to be a greater half or perhaps a lesser. Now, with that, it gives you the ability to be able to do whatever you want to do as far as development with the character race. And you're not limited. And you don't have to worry about penalties for doing that. And the other thing that I like is there are no, as they prefer to it, professions, not classes. But I'm going to use the word class because most people play d20s and that's what they're familiar with is there are no character class penalties for using a particular race for that character now with that in mind you at that point roll up your character attributes and the attributes are Pretty standard for a D100 system, but if you're used to a D20 system, it's going to be a little bit more than your basic six. And those are your strength, your constitution, your agility, your quickness, your self-discipline, your reasoning, your insight, and your presence. So let's break the attributes down and explain these a little bit better for the D20 person. So strength is strength. Constitution, same as the constitution as you would think of a d20 system. Agility would be like your dexterity. Whereas quickness is just in fact that, your quickness. How quick is your character? Your character can be very agile. They can be have a very keen sense of distance and sight to be able to deliver an arrow accurately to its target. But he may not be the quickest character. So that's where the quickness comes in. Then you got your self-discipline. Meaning how just that self-discipline is your character. Is your character the type that throws caution to the wind and says Let's go where the wind takes us. Or is your character at that point more disciplined? And they're like, we're not going to do this. We're not going to go down this road because I know from experience this is not going to end well for us. 
and then of course reasoning reasoning being how your character perceives how does your character basically if he's in the marketplace and he has a we'll say less than savory merchant trying to sell him some bogus magic goods how well is his reasoning to be able to judge that hey this guy is basically a jerk and he's trying to sell me some bogus stuff and then of course you have your insight and your insight best way I can explain it to is your characters higher intellect how your character is going to remember and if they if they were to read something to be able to reflect on that and pull that back out of their memory bank and then of course presence and presence is going to be the same as charisma if you're in a d20 system so along with your attributes you have your resistance or your saving throws however you want to look at that and those are represented by your stamina your will so your willpower to be able to resist and of course magic how well is your character resilient to the effects of magic now from there on out it goes into endurance points and this system doesn't use hit points it uses the idea of endurance meaning your character can only take so many concussive hits before at that point they become unconscious and then death occurs and you go into defense bonus and like armor class would be in a d20 system this takes into account at that point your agility your quickness and the defense bonus that that armor that you're wearing offers you also have an initiative initiative is based off the agility of your character now if you are a magic class and I love this about harp about ruin quest is another d100 system is how they do their magic now in the d20 system depending on how intelligent your wizard is or how much wisdom your cleric has at that point you're gonna get some bonus spells for that level of character now in order to achieve higher powerful spells at that point you have to wait to your characters level up and then at that point they can access those spells now with a wizard it takes into account in d20 systems that your wizard has to prepare the spells in the beginning of the day and they're in his memory and he can cast them at any time but once that spell is cast it's gone for the day until he relearns it again where these systems the d100 systems is rune quest and role master and harp differ which i really enjoy is the fact that they use what's called a powerpoint which means your attribute directly affects how much power how much mental potential your character has to be able to cast a spell and even the most basic spell because they can add more power into it be can become an extremely devastating spell that could decimate a lot of your foes just depending on how much power they want to put into it I find that very cool with the magic systems it really draws you in it gives you a lot of flexibility perhaps even for solo play and group play whereas in a d20 system you're limited to a spell effects by the level and then you have to wait until your character advances higher levels to be able to get the more powerful version of that spell whereas it doesn't do it in these systems now with the magic system each 
race as you're creating your character besides the human has special traits that are added to that character a good example is if you're playing an elf your elf has night vision well so does your grix and then of course your dwarfs have theirs and your halflings and your gnomes and so on and so forth same as you'd find in the d20 system but where the main difference is is harp and rollmaster they are skill heavy games they are real skill heavy but this is where I'm going to say some strategy goes into it even for the solo RPG player. So when you create your character and you're given your development points, at that point you choose your, your skills. Now there's a certain amount of skills that are just if you want to think of them as everyday skills. They're just skills that the everyday person would have acquired depending on the cultural background that they come from that they would get and then on top of that you get to choose skills for your particular profession or class and then you build at that point your skill tree if you want to look at it that way now without any ranks in any of these skills at that point you would get a negative 25 to any of the roles negative 25 percent unless you put one rank of your development points that you get into that skill to be able to raise it to a plus five you put two ranks in it and you raise it up to a plus ten now from there your skills are also going to have a percentage added to them from your tribute modifiers depending on where the skill derives from a good example is if you were using your climbing skill well that's gonna rely on your strength and your agility so taking those two bonuses from your attributes and adding them together for example with my character here I would have an 18 but if I didn't put any ranks into climbing it would be a negative 25 to the skill so it would at that point just wipe out my attribute bonuses but the fact that I put two ranks in it and it gave me a plus 10 it boosted it up so you can see where skills are very heavy in this system and you have to put a lot of thought into it when you make this system as to how you at that point allocate your points for your skills and when you play the game at that point depending on how tactical you are with combat versus if you're going to parry or dodge or so on and so forth you really have to pull on them skills and you have to at that point really really hope that the dice favor you because if they don't stuff can go downhill quick in harp or rollmaster as a resort but nevertheless these d100 systems offer an excellent excellent experience for the solo player for the fact that unlike a d20 system to where in combat you're gonna roll for your AC you're gonna roll the damage for your dice and just subtract from hit points and other than that you are just watching you're like doing record-keeping you're watching numbers dwindle away until those encounters disappear off the board or the combat in this is a lot different and let's go to some of the critical tables and read some of the damages that can happen. Now, if you remember from my example earlier, we talked about the barbarian coming that was hiding in the shadow, and he had the plus 15, and it didn't go so well for him. So let's get into 
our combat section and let's talk about with harp how quickly combat moves and the tables that they give you how this is a more streamlined version of Rollmaster and even for the solo player can offer a lot so they break their tables up in harp into at that point crush so if you're using a mace or a club, that would be a crushing or a bludgeoning type of weapon. And then you got your puncture weapons, which are going to be like your spears and your bows. And then you're going to go into your slash weapons. Obviously your swords, your daggers. Um, even depending on the type of axe you use, could be an axe. And you're going to go into grappling. So if you're using a monk that's using very physical type of attacks, they're going to consider that a grapple. And they even go into martial arts, just depending on how far you really want to take it. Because in Harp, it's a very, even though it's a fantasy system, you're really not limited to what you can make with these. Then it goes into large criticals, huge criticals. And it also goes into spells, reflecting spells. So those would be heat and cold, electrical, impacting, external poison, internal poison, and so on and so forth. Now, each table where I'm going with this is, let's, I'm going to pick one here off the magic table this time. And we're going to use a magic user as an example. So, using the example of my battle mage, and one of the skills that I have taken is he has the element, elemental weapon of heat, or fire if you want to look at it that way. So, I'm going to use the goblin example. The goblins have a 75% defense bonus, but my mage rolls 105, which is a critical. So they get to roll again. So the mage rolls again, but this time I roll, let's say, a 40. So now I'm up to 145. Now I'm going to, at that point, add my percentages into it. I'm going to add my 25% for my spell casting along with the 15% for my weapon and I'm also going to add in there at that point because of the fact that my battle mage was in cover I'm also going to add in his stalking and hiding which is like 84% and add those all up. Now, I haven't done the math in my head, but I'm going to say it's well over 200 at that point. And we're going to subtract the Goblin's defense bonus, which is a 75 from that. And I'm going to adjust that number up from the maneuver table of 10% for the fact that he's a new character and he's also a battle mage. So he gets a penalty for wearing armor and casting spells. But at that point, I'm going to upgrade that spell, right? So it's going to cost me two extra power points because I'm wearing armor. But what the heck? Let's go all in and add even more power points into this. So now at this point, I'm way, way, way above. I'm, we're going to say about 130. My percent now, all adjusted, is 130%. So I'm gonna go over here to the heat criticals. Now the table starts from a zero one and goes all the way to 120. And you read the little caption on there and it's gonna to explain to you the damage that it does. And for the solo player, this is awesome because it adds more into the solo experience of combat and really helps you imagine some of this stuff. So 120 just on my heat critical. This isn't the damage that the sword has done. This is just the heat damage. 
and it says all that remains is a large pile of smoldering ashes and bone fragments. Too late to get the marshmallows. That's great. That is great. And that's what I love about the game system, particularly for solo and solo play. And really adds a lot into this compared to a D20 system. And I think it could take your gaming to a next level. So, I say you give it a shot. Give it a try. Don't be afraid because it's a D100 system or some of the rumors you may have heard about Rollmaster or these other systems because you don't have to have a master's degree in math. Now, is there math involved with this particular system? Yes, there is. But the way that this system is set up is this system has so much possibility to it that if you were to take away that from the game system it wouldn't be the unique system that it is and because of that this is what makes harp so great and i love harp i love harp i love ruin quest now don't get me wrong, I love the D20 systems too, such as D&D &D and Basic Fantasy and all these other game systems out there, because I enjoy a wide array of role-playing games. But when I want to play a system to where I don't really know how the combat's going to end, I don't really know how it's going to end up, my character could be annihilating his foe one moment only to find himself dead next leaving you on the edge of your seat which is where i will say the myth is true with rollmaster or harp one of the most lethal game systems out there and it is an awesome system and i really do really do enjoy it and i hope for the, some of you out there if you're looking to branch out and get into a different system, maybe try something new. Maybe you're playing the D20 systems and they're getting stagnant. They're getting to the point to where you know those rule sets so much inside and out that you want to learn something new. You want to put something on the board that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. It's going to keep you wondering. It's going to give you that feeling of oh man harp is one of them systems that's going to do that for you and it delivers quite well but like i said the thing you got to remember this is an extremely skill heavy game it's all based off of skills that's all it really is unlike a d20 system you're going to be relying more on skills and during character creation you really 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 have to make some really good informed decisions as to where you put your bonuses or your development points for your skills and even if you do you're not going to know how they play out until you play the game and then at that point well you're either going to live the tale of the tale or your character will be defeated by the horrible chicken of bristol so folks, I think this is going to do it for this episode of Tabletop Talk as far as D100 systems go and some really, really good system, Rollmaster, Harp, they're both, they're great systems and I love them and if you get a chance to check them out, check them out. Don't, uh, don't be afraid to get into them. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to drop me a line and you know, I'll try to answer them as much as I can. Now, one thing I will tell you before I end this video. When it comes to Rollmaster or Harp and during character creation, one thing that you have to remember is it's not a D20 system. Whereas with D20 systems during character creation, everything is about bonuses. Bonuses, a bonus to this, a bonus to that, bonus to this, bonus to that. You don't have that. Everything is heavily, heavily abbreviated. So you really have to read the book, understand the abbreviations, and everything is broken up into a progressive, basically, 
a progression through your character as points. They don't necessarily give out bonuses as much of you're going to be allocated this many points at this stage of your character development is how it works out. So those are some of the key differences. So if you do decide to pick up Harp or if you find some old versions of Rollmaster and you decide to get in the Rollmaster and you start reading them and you're going, hey, wait a minute, I'm completely confused. What the heck's going on here? You have to remember those are the differences between the systems. You got to get bonuses out of your mind and D20 out of your mind and you have to look at it through a fresh new perspective. But when you do, when you learn it, trust me, it's going to give you hours of enjoyment and every time you play this game, you are never going to know what to expect because unlike any other game system out there, these games are have such a wide horizon of possibilities that that's what makes it cool. That's what makes it unique. That's what makes Rollmaster unique. And that's what makes their more streamlined version today. Harp or high adventure role playing. So cool. So with that in said my friends. I'm going to end the video here. And just remember if you liked the video click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed please subscribe. Click the bell icon yada yada yada. And you're going to hear about my new video. So. I'm going to end it here, and at that point, go refresh my cup of coffee, and play a little bit more harp. Got my characters here, and keep going to see how things are going to pan out. So far, not looking too good at gaining entrance to this underground, basically, base. But we'll see. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Artichoke dip out.